All right, in this tutorial, we're going to go over a program called Mapsy to Mapsy. Um, what we're going to use that program for is to take Geo PDFs and we're going to combine those those maps. We're going to cut them into tiles and stick them on our garment. And, uh, it might seem kind of tricky the first time you go over it or the first time you watch this, but it's not. It, it literally takes minutes. It's very easy. Um, and it's it can be a lot of fun building your own maps. So the first thing we want to do is, is download our Geo PDFs. And what those are, are just a, it's just a PDF file that's been geo-referenced. And uh, they're neat because the USGS has provided those PDFs for us for free on their website. And I'm going to provide that link for you on this YouTube video. So I'm going to go to my bookmarks here, USGS store. And that link will take you right to this page. So in the search bar here, we'll just go up to the area that we want. I'll just go to my hometown. Okay, so these rectangular borders indicate the area of the map. And I just want to take my crosshairs here, click on the map I want. That'll bring up a little place mark. Then I want to click on that, and that brings up a new window. And within this window is all the different maps for that area. Um, you can see that we've got the dates here. 2011 and we go all the way back down to 1947. So you would think we'd want the newest map available and that's true to some degree. What we want to look for is the right type of map. In 2011 and 2012 they started doing these these new style maps and if you click on this view button you can kind of get a little preview of that map. And they're going to look different. And It's hard to tell in this little window here but you can see, or you might be able to see, that that's basically aerial photography with a bunch of grids. And what those maps are is they'll take some aerial, and they'll take some topple lines, and they add a bunch of other stuff that uh, is really neat if you're just looking at the map, but it's just too much for what we're doing. So we don't want that. We want just a traditional topple map. So we'll come down to the next one, and this one's 1996, and we'll click View just for fun. I already know it's going to be the type of map we're looking for. Again, hard to see, but it's just a traditional topple map. So we'll close that window. We know that's the right style map, so we're going to hit this little plus button here. And what that does is it adds that to our download cart. So I've done that, and I want to close that window, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select this map also. And I'm going to click on the place mark, and I'm going to grab the 1996 map by clicking the plus button. Now I want to go over here to view download cart. And don't think you, you can only do two at a time. You can do as many as you want. Um, and later on, we'll, we'll go over the, the limit that Garmin has on tiles. Okay, so we have our two maps. Then, I'll, of course, all we do is hit download, and it would download those maps. I've already done that, so we don't need to wait on that. Um, typically, your computer will download those to your downloads folder. And you'll want to know how to where to find those maps or those files. And... Once I do that, I take those files and I put them in a folder somewhere where I can find them. And you can see I've made a new folder here called GeoPDF. And that's what that file will look like. It'll combine both the maps into one zip folder. Now, your computer probably already has a, a program to extract a zip folder. And you'll know it's zip by the little, little zipper right there, if you can see that. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to right click this time, so the left click and that will bring up your little window here. And I use a program called 7-Zip seven seven to extract my files. If you don't have a, a program to extract files, just Google 7-Zip and, uh, and it will do it for you. So anyway, I, I highlight it. I don't click on it. Come over here and I just want to extract here. And there you see we have our two files. Now I want to open the program called MapSD to MapSD. And I'll provide the link for that program as well. Um, last time I looked, this program cost 15 bucks, and um, it's a really good value. It does a lot of stuff. So here it is, and we'll open this up. And I guess I should thank John Thorne, the developer of this program. It actually lacked this feature when I first got it, and I asked him if there was a possibility he could add it, and Within 24 hours, he had uh, he had changed the program and, and already had a new version out. So he's a really good guy, and if you have 
problems with this program, just shoot me an email and he'll get right back to you. Okay, first thing we want to do is let's say we've never we've never converted over to a, a Garmin file before, so we just want to set our parameters. So we're just going to go up to Edit, Preferences and Settings, and then we'll want to click on the General tab. And <clears throat> you shouldn't have to change anything on this tab other than our pixel size. We want to make sure that's 1024 by 1024. The reason for that is that's the maximum allowable size for a Garmin tile. And if that number was smaller, we would have a bunch of little tiles. So that makes each tile basically bigger. And the reason that's important is Garmin only allows 100 tiles at all at a time for a custom map. Why they do that, I have no idea. The, the GPS is capable of much more. There's, there's ways you can patch the firmware on the GPS to bypass that. Um, you can Google it if you're interested. It's, it's not a real easy thing to do if you're not tech savvy. Um, but 100 tiles really gives you a pretty good area. Um, what I do is, if you know, in my elk hunt area, I'll have a, a special map set up on my computer. Um, and then my deer area might be somewhere different. So when it comes time to hunt deer, I'll just delete the one off my GPS for the elk area and then add my deer area. Once you've already established those maps, once you've already have them saved, it, it literally takes like 30 seconds to swap them over. So it's not that big a deal. The downside is, is you might think, well, why couldn't I just put five or six different files on my GPS and, and enable or disable them, you know, one at a time as I need them. Garmin won't let you do that either. You can only have one, one file. Well, you can have as many files as you want, but it, it adds up all the tiles together. And if it's over 100, it won't let you do it. So that, that really sucks. I wish they would change that. But anyway, general tab, 1024 by 1024. Now go to the Garmin tab. Make sure there's nothing selected on here. I think that by default, transparent KMZ is selected. You don't want that. It doesn't look very good. Uh, make sure your draw order stays around 60. And hit OK. So now our settings are set. We can load our files. And we've got to do one at a time. So we're going to go File, Load Calibrated Map. We'll do this top one here. Double click. And we'll let it do its thing. It, it takes a couple minutes. It's not the fastest program out there. Okay, now we just want to write that to KMZ. So if you look here, write Garmin Custom at KMZ. If you don't know what a KMZ is, it's just a Google F, Google Earth format. And it's the same format that Garmin uses for the custom app. So click on that. That's okay. That's okay. And it's going to work that. It shouldn't take very long. Okay, that one's done. Now we're going to want to do the other one. Load calibrated map. Okay. Select your other PDF. And again, we got to wait. Okay. And same thing here. We're going to want to write Garmin custom map. Okay. Okay. Okay, and it's done. We don't need to save anything. It's already it's already done its thing. We can just close the window. Now, wherever I got that file, wh wherever it was placed, is where the new file for Garmin will be. So I got those PDFs out of this GOP folder. And now we can see we have four files instead of two. The ones with the little Earth symbol are for Google Earth, and that's what we want. Now, from here, we could just transfer those right over to your Garmin. Um, but let's go ahead and bring it up in Google Earth, and there's some things we might want to look at here. Okay, so it loaded it up, and what we have here is, is another, uh, another map. Basically, I've loaded this map before. Um, I, what I want to do is I want to sure, make sure that my my places here over on the left is, is empty before I proceed. So I've got two items. I'm going to select it, then I'm going to right click and delete. And if you haven't fooled much with Google Earth, you probably won't have anything under my places. But just make sure that's empty. Okay. And why it left all that garbage there, I have no idea. Anyhow. 
let's load the other map. So we loaded the the first one. Now we'll come up to File, hit Open, and we're going to load this other one. So we're going to load both maps at the same time. Wait for all the tiles to load. And you can see that there was 24 tiles per map. So we have 48 tiles. We could do roughly twice this size if we wanted to. Okay, so our, both our maps are loaded and all the tiles are loaded. And if you look over here to the left, you'll see these little arrows and we can expand each map. The reason we may want to do this is if you, let's say you loaded four or five of these PDF maps on here and you're over your 100 tile limit. So what you could do is get rid of the little tiles that you don't want. Let's say I'm going to hunt over here on this side of the highway. I could come in here and it's kind of a pain, but you got to figure out which tile is which. But if you just uncheck them, you'll see that they disappear. But that's not good enough. You can't just uncheck them. If you don't want those tiles on the GPS, you have to highlight them by left clicking and right click and click delete. That'll actually remove them completely. And you can uncheck them and check them first to make sure you get the right ones. Okay. Want that one gone? Delete. Yeah, it, it's it's a pain, but that's how you have to do it if you want to remove tiles one by one. So I've done that, and let's say I'm all done. That's how I want my map to look. So we want to minimize it by clicking on that little arrow over here to the left again. So we just have two files. And if we want to combine these into one one file to make it easy to load on the GPS, what we can do is just highlight each one by clicking on it, then right click and save to My Places. And this is why we deleted all the stuff under My Places before. We don't want to send all that crap to the GPS. We just want these two maps. Same thing, right click, save to My Places. Okay, now you can see we have My Places right here and the two maps underneath it. We want to click on My Places, not the maps themselves. We want to send everything under that title to the GPS. So at this point, you'd want to make sure your GPS is plugged in, or do what I do. I've, you know, I've got the SD card. I've got to open up my GPS real quick here, and I'm going to pull out my SD card and just plug it right in the computer. You can do it either way. I've got a bad cable going to my GPS, so it keeps disconnecting on me, so I'm going to do it this way. Okay, SD card is in. And another thing that's real important here is to make sure you have the folder custom maps on your SD card. And uh, it should automatically put that folder on your GPS if you plug it in. But if it, if it doesn't, it's no problem. You can just create it. So here's my SD card. I'm going to open it up, and you can see there's the Garmin folder. And if I don't have this custom maps, folder I need to create it. So that's where we're going to end up putting those maps. We don't we don't need this window open. Yet. So anyhow, back to my places. We're going to right click on that and we're going to select save places as. And then we just need to find either our SD card or if you had your Garmin plugged in, you would see you'd see your Garmin GPS and then underneath it you would see the removable drive which is your SD card. And I think you could probably put it right on your on your Garmin internal memory if you have some. That would work too. But anyhow, let's see. I need to find my uh, SD card of the computer. And scroll down. And there's my SD card. Double click. Garmin. Custom maps. And you can see I have a file on there already called Montana. I'm going to delete that because I only want one on here at a time. And we'll just, we'll just call this file test. Save. Okay, so that saves it to my SD card. So what I'll do is I'll put the card back in the GPS and uh, and I'll flip on my little phone camera and we'll take a look at the GPS and make sure it works.